I V M. Hey everybody, welcome to a very special episode of the Geek Fruit Podcast. Recording actually on the day our three hundredth episode is released. So the episode is out right now, but what you're listening to is coming out one week after the fact. But we're recording it on the day. This is episode three hundred one. Yes, it's three hundred two. Three hundred two. Yes, three hundred two. Okay. Yes. But three hundred came out today. Today, whilst we record this, right. so we get to. It's a double win. We get to enjoy the 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 day, and record while we celebrate it in our minds and hearts. And is that how we're celebrating? Because I was thinking you guys were getting me stuff. Why? Did you, one second. Why? Why? One second. First of all, because it's all my three of us are here. Anniversary of this podcast. It, uh, hi, Dinkar. Hey, what's up? Jishnu. Hello. And me, Tejas. And uh, three hundred episodes, hundred a pop. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we're yeah. recording. Oh, three we're claiming a hundred each. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right, yeah, yeah. This is how we dissolve the Geek Fruit uh, Institution. <laughs> yes. It's like, chalo. Each of you three take your hundred episodes and leave. Actually, we owe twenty five percent to somebody else. Listen, um, <laughs> we should uh, we should talk about uh, a little less about uh, three hundred episodes and just move straight. You're the, the one who's been talking about three hundred. I know. Episodes. I just thought that it should be mentioned since it's Use impossible. The word we very loosely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's just let's move on because I use the word episodes pretty loosely as well. Do you think we'll do another three hundred episodes? Yeah, sure. No, like I know the podcast will go on, but do you think we will do the three hundred episodes? Oh, you mean somebody else could take over for us? And How long do you want to do this? How I, many episodes more are we going to do of this show? See, three. I knew when I started the Geek Food <laughs> Podcast that I wanted to do like a hundred episodes, and that's it. Yeah, no more. Well, it's but like a, are, so. it's <laughs> like a, it's what, like what Harvey Dent says in The Dark Knight, a play, a, mu- a movie that we transformed into a table read a few months ago, hmm. where he says. I'm sure the Batman doesn't want to do this forever. So that is what I pose to you today, whilst we discuss the Mandalorian. Okay, sure. Yeah, just right, do. Then. Yeah, you're making faces and you're saying nothing. I'm doing maths. It's the opposite in my of head. what this podcast needs. Okay, no, I'm doing no. Maths in my to be head. perfectly serious, nobody thought when we started this that we would hit 300 Actually, episodes did you not necessarily. Think? No, because I didn't think that far ahead. I was like, sure, we'll keep doing it. Let's yeah, see how far true. we go. But that's 300 true. episodes. Hmm. The reason I believe we're still here and we're still talking about stuff is because there are things that we want to talk about that keep coming out, man. Yes, that's true. Even though the world turns to shit, uh, movies are still made if And I someone's got to talk about Harvey those movies Dent from The Dark Knight yeah. The Geek Fruit Podcast is my favourite podcast It's in a deleted scene Great Yeah, but he does say that I, oh, okay Nolan cool, cool, cool. But no, actually Nolan was on the podcast uh, When he came to Bombay <laughs> That's and, true uh, Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's we, have, another, we still that's have so many things Tenet. That we want to talk about, man That's why we keep coming in here This isn't this isn't an obligation It's a compulsion This is like uh, This is uh, Pop Culture Anonymous You're right This is like what uh, We were speaking about last week Like what Dr. Manhattan says In uh, in the original Watchmen comic Which he says Nothing ever ends So mm. this podcast doesn't end I was merely considering How far our role in that Would uh, go on for So what but, I'm yeah. saying is On yeah. the podcast itself I don't know Because we could keep talking They might Can we talk the, about The goddamn Mandalorian I'm really excited Stop, stop, stop with the words Jishnu, Jishnu, Stop with the words Jishnu, Get to the damn Mandalorian We could have this done This is a, so exciting We could this have done so a, a big Let's do the Mandalorian Speech I'm About so excited. 300 episodes Last this. week It's been so long We could have done it I've been waiting for months. Last week I've been waiting my whole life But we couldn't All my life Because you were not here and I finally got it You bunked it's You bunked Mandalorian. He How bunked long, long do you think Jishnu will keep it? doing this <laughs> Can we get to this Mandalorian Jishnu will do it Forever I'm so excited if I'm just like how the If there's Star Wars stuff He has to it's talk about How long are we gonna do this <laughs> Let's get to it Alright Oh my god Let's talk about so Chalo Say about Mandalorian Disney you have 45 Plus. minutes Please First begin. time I cried So 5 minutes into episode 1 You begin with I have a question for you Jishnu Okay then Okay uh, notably, you have been against very cutesy characters in several franchises. What mm. has made you turn uh, towards the light for towards Baby Yoda and, and oh, the I Mandalore? Don't, I'm not a fan of Baby Yoda. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, cool. I'm so the show I'm, has I'm two principal characters and you don't like one of them? Yeah, I'm saying consistent. <laughs> yes. I love this show. And I don't particularly care for Baby Yoda. But I um, weeped several times in every episode. For, Explain yourself, why? For instance, episode one, uh, about five, seven minutes into it, um, you meet Quill mm. and he is... Nick Nolte. 
He's uh, <laughs> love it. Yeah. He's horse fish wrangling those horse fishies. What are what are they called? A uh, fish horse let's, face. Let's go with that. The fish horse face people. And there's a good maybe three four minutes of um, epic score while our man Mando tries to wrangle a horse fish. And then they finally wrangle said horse fishy. That's the first episode itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like mm. with some like not too far into the first episode. Yeah, um, and it's a mon- not a montage well, or let's call it a montage, lack of a better word. It's a montage sequence for like a good minute or two, which is far longer than it needs to be, of two dudes riding horse fishies with the most epic score off into the distance, and it's so dumb. And I was so pleased that we finally have a show where. Um, unlike with especially with the saga films especially with yeah. the rise of skywalker you don't need to cram in all the stuff you can you can milk it you yeah. can sit there and just let the weirdness be the weirdness yeah and it's finally feels like a guy that is able to make the show that he wants to make without you know big brother parent company overseeing and making sure all the boxes are checked number yeah. 2 space poop we got our first toilet in star wars so happy episode 1 just quick quick like you know Passing side note, just random, you know, byline. I'm just gonna go take a dump. When is see when does that happen? It's on the on the razor. Uh, razor. What's it called? Razor. Ra- Ed? Razor. razor uh, yeah, something like that. That's, like a, some, that's the first planet. That right? could be a Gillette. The bounty hunter. No, 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 planet. no. I mean the spaceship. I mean his ship. Oh, Mando's sorry, ship. sorry, sorry, sorry. The yes. Razor Crest. The Razor Crest. The Razor Crest. It sounds like a Gillette shaving shaving cream. Yeah. But anyway, uh, there's and just it goes one in quick moment. Four, <clears throat> right. Sorry. Quick Let's moment that he just somebody goes take a poop. And I loved it because it's the kind of stuff that you wouldn't get o- approved in a movie. Yeah. Because it'd be like, no, 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 we have more plot that we need to get through. So nix the the fun stuff, nix the the stuff that has very little relevance to the so actual story. Is that story. what appealed to you mostly about yeah. the show that you get to see like a longer drawn, like yes. nice, a slow burn? Completely. Yes. Like another one, a uh, polar opposite end, book ending, the exact same sentiment. Last episode, the first. <sighs> The first opening moments before the the, the title sequence yeah. is uh, two uh, bike scout troopers. So good. For one like of them is uh, Jason Sudeikis. Jason Sudeikis. For like correct, four or yeah. five minutes. The other minutes. one is Adam Pally. There you go. Who's two he? awesome dudes. Adam Pally is, is uh, Adam Pally. He was in uh, Happy in a, Endings for a bit. He's, he's in a bunch of movies. And he's, bit he's great. He's yeah. just really good. Okay. Really funny guy. But I loved watching you know four or five minutes of two idiot stormtroopers. Yeah. Like stormtroopers have never said. More words. They've always been very like. I mean, unless on, it's like Clone Wars, yeah. Yeah, but, but yeah, then, unless it's Clone yeah. Wars, which is you know extended stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, or rather cartoons. And they're and they're a lot more like <clears throat> they're a lot smarter. Yes. And like yeah, yeah those yeah, guys yeah. than so these guys. Like are. every that, time, that entire sequence in that last episode. By the way, mm-hmm. uh, friendly warning. Yes. This will spoil the Mandalorian. I was oh. going to add. Uh, to uh, Helen, I yes. Right. So, but the last episode. This is not really a spoiler, but it begins with that sequence of uh, just goofing around with yeah, two stormtroopers. Storm and it's so funny it that uh, so much of uh, college Reddit, humor back in the day. It, it, it is very college humor. Troopers, exactly. Which was literally this. It and was these two stormtroopers. Goofing around on a Death Star like It was thing. like a parody of, of yeah Basically of And it and was great There's another show also Which reminds me of this Which is uh, like uh, Red vs. Blue It's uh, like yeah. a, It's like a spoof show on, on like Halo And Master Chief and stuff And it has all these Kinds of dialogues and Very the, similar The yeah. funny thing about it Is that Everyone is helmeted So you really can't see Anybody's expressions Or faces Just like two Identical looking people Just having a conversation So yeah It reminded me a lot of that And the the best part of that, About that is that They can't Shoot file, the thing. yeah, in, and how in, long uh, did they do that yeah. for? Right, like just a simple shot of them shooting and missing. You could have established that in one blast. Yeah, he tried. The other guy tries. Second blast. Cool. We both. I suck. think that shot that itself goes on for like, is what uh, really works. It's not even the fact that they just keep doing it, but the idea that the show leans into a lot of what we know about Star Wars. Like even uh, it's in taking an earlier a episode, meta dialogue yeah, of Star Wars. Uh, and, I forget whom, yeah. but basically, uh, Bill Burr's character. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when somebody makes fun of him, he goes like, "I wasn't a stormtrooper asshole." Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I can actually shoot. Yeah, 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 yeah. So addressing like stuff in the lore that you know in ways that haven't been addressed before, sure. Yeah, but let's talk about the show in particular. Let's talk about the show. I don't think, I, I mean, for me, it was, it's the most John Favreau thing ever. Even though I know Dave Filoni's hand is 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 well into it, it's the most John Favreau show. And I'm what I mean by that is that it's a great watch. I really, really liked it, but the stakes aren't high enough for, like, generally Star Wars speaking. Sure, yeah. Uh, it's the lowest stakes I've seen in any Star Wars material, which is yeah, fine. I'm with you. Uh, but I feel like that's more of a John Favreau thing. John Favreau is, like, very 
chill about most things that he makes he's, and he's, he's very personal with the stories very the stories personal and very and also light and when i say yeah. light can you not uh, this is not like watchmen or like any other show right now which you shouldn't binge probably like this one you can binge like couple of episodes at a time because one of one because of its duration and uh, because each episode is about 30 to 40 minutes if i'm not mistaken mm-hmm. and uh, it's also like uh, i mean a lot of people have noted that it's a lot like an rpg it's like it's like very video gamey is like every time you know uh, you know he goes he has a mish- every episode is pretty much like a it's like uh, non is uh, it kind of not doesn't reset the status quo completely but it's like got a very fin- finite ending at least the first three f- four episodes have like very mission side questy right. kind of uh, vibes to it a um, lot of episodes end with just all right and now back into your ship to onward to the yeah, next journey yeah and to yeah. P- even to put it uh, one way and what i mean by stakes is that you know there's a moment on a planet which is the felt the most samurai jack out of all these episodes where they reach this planet and uh, these villagers come and they say hey can you help us this is the most samurai jack plot like ever this is literally every episode of samurai jack and he's just like except in this case he's a reluctant warrior and in that samurai jack is uh, you know he is in samurai jack he gives up his mission to help others here he reluctantly gives up his mission to help others so it's almost the same and in and there's one moment in that episode where the chance is offered to him to relinquish the the responsibility of this child into the hands of what seems to be a very caring mother figure and he can do that and there is like even a bit of like romance or whatever it is mm-hmm. and uh, and in the last 10 minutes it's like next and he's like no i guess i can't do it got to go and then we never we don't hear about that again so for me it was like okay i guess it's like samurai jack but it's not 22 episodes it's like okay well, this entire episode was just to show that the mando is a good guy ultimately even though he was originally kind of portrayed as a morally gray person he's not actually very morally gray yeah he's that great at all he, yeah he's not he's really uh, but i think going into he this does show seem very great to me why i i there's fl- a lot of his history that's talked about it if anything he might have been a darker character earlier than his kind of that's folding over yeah. onto the better but side i don't think that's showcased but i think at everybody all, everybody, everybody has show at a all. dark past it is they their, talk about like, how dark things in their past yes but yeah, in the but entire like, show isn't that his entire arc no, no but, but everything i see him doing in this one i see yeah, him always doing in the like show, the right the exactly right. Yes, yes, nothing is telegraphed as like or oh, him doing a questionable yeah i've never seen him like i've never seen him do anything particularly like Walter Whitey. When I think of great exactly. actors, I think of Walter White as like the perfect actor. Yeah, he's who, even yeah, you darker never than know. that. Like yeah. any time Walter White makes any decision, it could be literally any. But he's guessing. Well, that's because do. you're but entering Mando's Walter White's arc at the time when he's Breaking Bad. That's the name of the show. Correct. Yeah, yeah, so you're yeah. entering when he's Breaking Good. Yeah. He, ah, but correct. so therefore he's no longer that. My point is like in this it's in not these episodes. No, it's not what I mean is it's not as simple as him being like a character on the side of good. Right. There's a there's an arc to it. So he's a pretty layered character in the sense that you can see he's coming from. from a spot where he was uh, more of a mercenary type so and that's now exactly he's becoming Han a and Poe. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I mean you, it's, you it's, not, spice, it's not it's not as to smuggle spice too. Exactly. It's not as dark trooper. as I originally yeah. thought it would be mm-hmm. when the show first came out the trailer was shown I was like oh we're going to get like a gritty uh Ryan Johnson esque uh idea about you know Star Wars now where it's not the good guys it's not the bad guys it's just the the guys in between and it's the bounty hunters which is always an interesting place to go to in in any kind of like assassin like uh, I'm also you know I also finished watching The Witcher and it, very similar in in many ways because The Witcher is also a kind of a bounty I mean he is a bounty hunter he is like a grey character and I feel like in that show it's still more gray than here and for those reasons maybe disney plus maybe whatever you want to say maybe it's john favreau maybe it's dave filoni but there's a uh, the the complexity of the character is there but i don't think they've reached it yet like i think maybe in seasons going forward we might be able to dive a little more into his past and find out exactly why he comes off as this like reluctant hero or whatever it is but for now in this show it's a very breezy watch it's it doesn't make me like go like oh i got i can't take a second from this show to kind of go i, like, I like the exact opposite after every episode no so after uh, after every episode i was just like i need to watch the next one like stat i need to know now what happens right but apart from maybe the seventh episode which is uh, how many episodes were there totally eight, eight episodes eight so the seventh episode eight, yeah. is probably my favorite episode it's like uh, i think it's the best one it's got the most amount of like 
tension in it because Gus Fring, literally mm-hmm. Breaking Bad, whatever, mm-hmm. is here and he's he's there. But I, 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 otherwise, the rest of the show is quite breezy for me, and I was just like, oh, cool. But I feel the stakes were the ones. But I'm fine with it. I just want to say that I'm I'm completely okay with it. But this is just my opinion of of. What I thought the show originally was supposed to be or, or was going to be, and this is what it is. Yeah. What did I, you feel about that? I I don't know if the stakes were. I mean, they're they're different stakes. I would say because uh, there's clearly a lot, but it's a much more personal show than Star Wars typically tends to be. So uh, because even though we talk about uh, say the Skywalker saga, and it is about the people and the characters in yeah. Star Wars. Yeah. Here it's clearly about one person really and his journey. Partly that, partly yeah. the fact that the structure is, uh, I mean, you can call it like video game like or, I mean, essentially it's a classic TV structure, isn't it? It's a, it's an episodic show. Mm. Everything is an episode. The larger arc takes a long time to build up. Yeah. And in, a, in the in the vein of like older shows, I want to say, right? Like yeah. where it's like House or something where the overall like the through line is not, is hinted at at every episode. but It's there in every yeah. episode, but it's not the focus of yeah, the episode that's necessarily. True. Yes. And like that still happens that's in a lot of shows. I think it's just the fact that a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, movies and TV shows essentially are now all trying to do the same thing where there's this need to build to a larger story the entire mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. Uh, especially like movies are now also falling into that uh, mm-hmm. kind of zone but there's I mean like even shows like your CSIs and whatnot are essentially the same procedurals, format yeah. right? like procedurals episodic shows yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a classic TV format and I like that they lean into that it is very Samurai Jack in that way mm. but Samurai Jack now in hindsight after like all its seasons has possibly the most epic character arc you can think of absolutely, it's, it's, it's yes. an absolutely moving story and the, I mean of course the last season kind of really sets that into motion but Absolutely, yeah. because there there was a need to wrap something up, which you can see in this show as well. Like in a microcosm, it starts with like there are several episodes in the middle where nothing really has ha- to happen ha- in terms of exactly. the character Overall, arc okay. itself. It's just interesting things happen. Mm. Uh, so I think uh, what the character of the Mandalorian is like and where the overall story of the show is headed is not even close to revealed at this point <coughs> this is the kind of show I think that will build on that for years to come and at some point like probably 7 or 8 years in it's it's like even sitcoms right like uh, 30 Rock when it started you had the archetypes of like this is what each of these characters are like but by the end of it you were like moved by the arcs that they were going through mm-hmm. I think that's where this show will go as well and that's what I really enjoy about it it's not uh, hesitant about whether it's down to a scene and the way the dialogue plays out mm. or whether it's the overall character arc it doesn't worry about having to get through to like alright chalo let's like let's hit the big ending and figure out what the stakes are it's willing to let it build in like a big but slow way mm. yeah what he said yeah yes <laughs> I mean exactly yeah. I, I, this, is, this show is a fucking 11 on 10 for me yeah it's, 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 a, it's, it's a great it's show it's hit Everything I could ever ask for and more gave me things yeah. I didn't know I wanted. And it gave me such uniquely me-centric things that made me so happy. Like, for instance, nobody nobody gave a shit about this, but I creamed my pants. The minute I see, um, I think episode six or five or six, um, when my girl Ming-Na shows up. How does she show up? I knew she was going to be in it, so I was excited to see her because it's my, my world's colliding and it's amazing. But she shows up genuinely uh, in a hologram, sat across from um, Mando at the what is basically the cantina right. in a Han versus Greedo moment. It looks exactly like that show. They are on Tatooine in one episode, right? Like, was it Tatooine? Yeah, they are. They are actually, oh, I thought it was a desert, desert planet. Uh, no, so they go into the, the, the... I love that, but... Um, <laughs> it wasn't Mos Eisley, that's there is sure. a, Yeah, it was exactly the same bar. Are you certain? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it, looked ex- it looked very similar. It is similar. exactly that it might, bar. It might have been. Maybe yeah, it yeah. was. Hmm. But that's my point. I was just like, whoa, I, the minute they walk into that place, I was like, something amazing has to happen because this is not a coincidence. You don't just casually walk into a place that looks exactly yeah. like that mm-hmm. and sit at that exact spot in the exact same places. Yeah. And then my girl shows up. Yeah. This, nice. is, this, is, this is for me. Dude, this uh, is written literally for me. Another show that this is kind of like is Resistance. Like Resistance has the same kind of vibe, uh, especially in terms of like where they go and like the types of spots that they are in. It reminded me a lot of that. Um, things that I love, obviously, I love the lore. I love the, I love the, I love that the Mandalorian is like overnight after that trailer dropped. It's the same thing like Guardians of the Galaxy. It's like, Overnight, the whole world knew what a Mandalorian is, or at least like knows the word Mandalorian and is just like uttering it. It's like so weird because some of us have like lived with that, you know, with the characters and and the species or the yeah, or the races the planet, for yeah. so long. 
And it's just like Now this is officially a thing And to give him a The article Is like <laughs> that know, This right? is the Mandalorian yeah. And I don't know What happens after episode 3 but or to the rest of the Of the clan uh, But he seems like Now he's even Less in Lesser numbers now The Mandalorian He's only Mandalorian <laughs> Yeah he's like Yeah Yeah Possibly The yeah. Mandalorian yes A lot of the The clan was wiped out Yeah it seems so like. I, I, but At least and they say that By the end of the, the last episode mm-hmm. um, That some of them got away But some of them did not um, Yeah man Let's uh, let's talk about Your favourite uh, Characters After this break Hey everybody Welcome to another Awesome week on the IVM Podcast Network If you aren't following us On social media Why aren't you Please do It's very important we're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. would also like to thank our sponsors, Storytel and Intel. I also just wanted to add a brief note to our listeners. Uh, we've recently changed some of our show's hosting platforms, and if you're having any issues with your subscriptions, please do resubscribe to the shows and everything should work fine from there. We have a little bit of a announcement to make. Our Kannada podcast, Thale Harate, turns 50 episodes old this week. Alok Prasanna Kumar and Saryu Natarajan of the Ganatantra podcast joined Pawan for a three-episode special as they discussed the CAA, NRC, and the freedom to protest in episodes 50, 51, and 52. So if you speak Kannada, why aren't you listening to that show? Also on Cyrus Says this week, Cyrus is joined by stand-up comedian and winner of the Mrs. India Earth pageant, Deepa Javeri. They talk about what goes behind the scenes at a beauty contest, how she entered comedy at a late stage in life, and how her family views her career choices. On Pesa Vesa, Anupam is in conversation with Puneet Khurana, managing partner at Stoic Advisor. They talk about evidence-focused investing, stock selection, and more. On paperback, Padmini Vaidyanathan joins Racheta and Satyajit to talk about the contents of Vitamins 3 and books that inspire her to create an alternative narrative with women at the center. On Golka, Patrupti is joined by Rohit Malekar, a photographer who talks about his experience of shooting the Northern Lights and how he manages to stay grounded in this highly competitive industry. On Agla Station Adulthood, Ritasha and Ayushi are joined by Andre Borges, former news production manager at BuzzFeed India. They discuss CAA and NRC and its impact on the country. On Storytellers and Storytellers, Vineet is joined by founder of a little anarchy film, Skoval Bhatia, and his wife and AVP of design at QK Digital Media, Nama Kumar. They talk about politics and popular entertainment of 2019. On Geek Fruit, Tejas, Jishnu and Dinkar share their thoughts about the first ever live-action Star Wars TV show, The Mandalorian, and discuss Baby Yoda's cuteness at length. On Football Shootball, the ultimate football team of the decade is upon us. Hosts Shivram, Karthik and Gaurav form the best possible team with the best players from the 2000s. The final squad is already up on IBM's Instagram. Listen in to the episode to see how they got this team and who got left out and why. And with that, let's get you back to your show. Hey guys, we're back. We're talking about the Mando. Um... One of my favorite things this time at Comic Con was there was a Mandalorian walking about, and then mm-hmm. we called out to him to take a photo. It was the us. Mandalorian. Walking it was about. the Mando, mm-hmm. though it was like half Beskar, <laughs> not complete Beskar. Well, he's not. He's yes. not uh, all the way through episode three. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and we called out to him. We said, Mando. Can we take a photograph? And he took off his helmet, which we which then had to, cool. which we we're going to yeah. blur out in the video that <laughs> yeah. we that we put out. But um, he's like, hey man, big fan of the podcast. I was like. This is the greatest moment we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know, it is fine that he did that because uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not a living thing. <laughs> oh, I'm not. God. That was okay. You're dead inside and out. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> All right. So, uh, to speak of which, we do. Um, uh, uh, we are going to spoil this show And uh, Henceforth So we do Henceforth. Yeah yeah From from this point on We haven't spoiled anything really Not, not, yeah, not yeah. yeah Yeah So not really. uh, Big part of the show was like Are we going to see the Mando scene? First of all like Pedro Pascal Kind of playing this role mm-hmm. And that you can't emote But he still does an excellent job of mm-hmm. And I hope it is And most probably it is him In the suit Throughout the It's a couple of episodes He wasn't apparently He's not in a lot of parts Obviously When yeah, stunts mean, and stuff Are involved But uh, Like the episode Jessica Chastain directed For example yes. She was like I didn't work with Pedro at all He added the dialogue later But on set It was the oh. two uh, Stunt doubles Doing the entire thing but Because it, he was uh, well, Doing no, a play At the time I think oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's a man of the Damn. <laughs> Very convenient Damn. Uh, I'm doing it's a play It's like such a great job To go like Alright you're hired But you can go do Something else if you want it, it, like, is, it is a It is a weird one Do you think he one, phoned though, His right? lines in Quite literally Because they were like uh, Why don't you just Call us on your set They with- won't even Have to add an effect <laughs> To it <after. laughs> yeah, The natural speaker phone Yeah Yeah that's so true Oh my god Is that a studio near you? Quickly just go by But uh, So yeah I think his performance is great But a lot of it is uh, Even his delivery A lot of times Is flat It's right? pretty He doesn't flat. have to get super emotional So it's really yeah. subtle It is difficult though But I think though, it's right? been written so well This yes. show that, it's, uh, just, it's just directed It, it has yeah. to be written around it's That all about, character Because yeah, It's all about the edit 
it's it's so difficult because everybody else has to kind of really have their game on to kind of like reflect what he's doing it's like acting opposite r2 <laughs> yeah seriously yeah. you repeat the lines back yeah. Yeah. like what kind I mean, of it's, difficult it's the same it's the same thing as like when vedo was first introduced to us right it's uh By the way, who's the guy who plays uh, vedo i keep forgetting his, his name the, the, the guy, the guy who physically yeah. plays yeah, it. Yeah, then I was trying to get him off his guard. It's fine. We'll get him. Yeah. If he said uh, James Earl Jones, then I'll say, is that a voice oh, actor? Oh, I see uh, what you're going for. One day I'll get him. So you remember James Earl Jones, but you don't remember the guy in the suit. Mm, I though, see. Though, yeah, and, and that's our point, basically. Yeah, anyway, that's our point. Uh, it's uh, David Prowse, everyone. Okay, listen. Ah, uh, Correct. Uh, he's actually really pissed And he's not allowed to show up on Because he wasn't events. told that uh, He was going to be swapped out Right I get that Yeah yeah <laughs> Like if, if it's a oh, yeah. He walk into a what movie you mean for like So is the Mandalorian acting uh, Just <laughs> Do you mean for Rogue One He wasn't going to No he, in, in, no, as in, James Earl Jones has never been in the suit Arriba, wow, he's the, David Prowse David Prowse No no he, was he wasn't called not, not, not in Rogue One When he found out his he's voice also really was, What about now? Revenge of the Sith Is that him That is uh, Hayden Christensen only Was Hayden Yeah Oh okay yeah. So, same height. Uh, same height. Do you think they made another suit? Put uh, put boots in uh, on the guy. Put put newspapers in your yeah, yeah. In in Darth Vader's <laughs> boots. But, Get um, me the Daily Rebel. No, it's fine. Uh, um, what was I getting at? Yeah, but basically it's the same. It's the same thing as when Vader was introduced to us. Much like when like Voldemort is introduced to us. People that don't have that much screen time, but their lack of presence on screen is replaced by people talking about them and hyping them up as like the ever imposing force that is chasing after us or the he who must not be named yeah. and therefore the few moments that you do get seem like oh my god it's that guy I've heard so much about you your your uh, what's the word your reputation precedes you with the case of the Mando though since we don't know anything about him but we see him all the goddamn time he's in basically every shot and every scene Yeah, and yeah he doesn't speak that much mm. uh, I think it works for the form because you're able to do things like just watch the guy riding a fish horse for five minutes, <laughs> and then and that makes you endeared to the guy because you're like, oh, cool! This m- music is beautiful. Yeah. He's in a beautiful landscape. I don't know anything about him, but he's trying really hard to yeah. ride this weird-looking thing. Love it. I guess I like you because you're amusing to me. And then when it comes to things like long, drawn-out scenes, like every scene when it was him and Baby Yoda in the cockpit, yeah, pretty much at the start or the end of the the episode, it's him playing with that little joystick, right? The joystick, yeah. There's no words in that. I it's love, just, I love how little dialogue two, there three, is in this it's show. It's just two, man. three, two, three minutes where yeah. it's on you to just infer from the yeah. edit based on how long you're meant to just linger looking at a guy whose face you can't read for emotion and just like info for yourself yeah. what do you think about him and that's why that's why I think coming back to what we were talking about earlier about him being grey or not so grey I think the greyness comes from on paper you're a bounty hunter and you kill people for money so that makes you inherently a bad person for doing bad things mm. but when it comes to a moment like this it's it's not a big deal to be like alright he's cute I'll give him a ball to play with any idiot can give a cute baby a ball to play with that's no amazingly profound or beautiful gesture that's a pretty simple <laughs> thing it's pretty straightforward yeah. however yeah. if you Put that right after you've seen him on a Gatling gun knocking out 20 plus stormtroopers. Yeah. Which is, yeah, he's doing for the right reasons, but he is murdering bitches, right? But he was <laughs> right as well. Fact. And uh, so it's not, I, I, I agree with you in that it's not uh, shown as much as we're told about it. But there, there are these hints towards his pretty dark past, right? Like huh, uh, yeah. when they run into that Bilbo gang. Yeah. They all talk about how he's how, done some what really... A, what a ledge he is. He's a Star Wars legend, literally. A, a ledge for doing <laughs> some really shady stuff, apparently. Yeah. Right. But you know... Because I, even they're like, oh my God, you did that shit? Speaking so, of the whole show, don't... But the, so this show is is a, a lot of show, don't don't tell. There's like, there's, there's very little dialogue in the show, which is why it's so... It is also a very... he abandons Baby Yoda at one point. But you yeah. like that, Jishnu. <laughs> I, this is a very relaxing show for me in in many ways. Like, is that they're long? I love I love oh, the it's fact pretty that average. Long silences, huh? It's pretty average. What? what? The show? What? What? Because no. you enjoy average things. Oh. oh. Please continue. Okay. All right then. <laughs> I don't want to say anything. Go yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> Let me address the elephant in the room with Baby Yoda, which nobody seems to be talking about. Which is what? When he is that his real name? No, f- that. The when elephant he, when, in the room. When, when he showed up. When he showed up, right? Um, it seems like the whole world's first thought was, "Oh, he's so cute," which is fair. Yeah, he's adorable. Yes. But did nobody else see this as like the most beautiful metaphor of baton being passed from one Lucas to one Filoni, as 
you have the new trilogy uh-huh. you have the new saga so like cool the story continues right with these three new guys that we love and mm-hmm. yeah now we're going to tie it back we're going to give you a han and this movie going to give you luke in this movie yada yada uh but i saw this as the truest form of like okay we're done with the old guard now it's all on you you take the ball completely and run with it as opposed to with the new trilogies which still had one foot firmly in the in the past and tried had to like do that balancing act mm-hmm. i think by virtue of giving this show and these showrunners <coughs> their own yoda i i saw that completely mm-hmm. as you have full reigns to do what you want you have your second coming of christ quite literally in the it universe really is yeah that's that's what i'm thinking the whole time I'm like yeah he's cute but he's so like he's like the poster boy for star wars as like at, at this point, as yeah. the, as the end all be all of everything possible like if if yoda can't do it it's not going to happen right yeah. as like what are the limits of the force you know no but they uh, can they can pull a carry poppins and fly across space but yoda could probably like do that twice as fast right because he's yoda so by seeing a yoda that we mm, don't know yes you've completely like you, you haven't put a wrench in the matrix you've made a second matrix on another planet altogether yeah i know that i mean that. I and that's that. what i'm thinking of every time i see baby yoda i'm like yeah he's adorable great that's easy putting a cute thing in your show is not anything impressive i agree i but I, I, i'm I, i'm really excited by the fact that this guy who we all know is the thing to look out for has done next to nothing in this season yeah and it's working brilliantly because like you said it's a long game it's a very long drawn out thing yeah. and not not much has happened in the grand scheme of the actual plot as you said in this season for the mando himself but also for fucking baby yoda yeah. i'm so excited to see do, is he a good guy is do we do we want to see as far as baby I'm yoda concerned, yeah in the show oh, yeah definitely yeah. as far as I mean, i'm concerned baby yoda's more gray than fucking mando is because I, I don't know the I, first I, thing about that i think we he's 50 to, years old what he does what is he done kill a lady at one point yeah but because he's threatening the only caretaker that he has Right? I that love, yeah, happens, yeah, yeah, that's true. But uh, I, I love uh, again. I think it's the Bill Burr episode where he finds Baby Yoda and goes like, "What is this? Some kind of pet?" Pet, yeah. <laughs> and Mando's <laughs> like, like, "Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah I guess." I it's, mean, I, I think this he is my Baby Yoda. He doesn't want to reveal that this is something that he desperately course, yeah, cares yeah, yeah, but for. But essentially, that's that is uh, Baby Yoda's character in this. That's another reason he's so adorable, right? He's, he's essentially a, like a dog. He's a small baby cat. He's, a, he's the muscle. He's, <laughs> he's, a, muscle. A, he's a very powerful uh, yeah, yeah. like pet. Is yes. the is the he's key. a he's a uh, what? He's not a pet guy. What's a cat? No, no, no. What, what, what's what's, what's Fury's cat? Like yeah, one. He's a, he's a, he's a, it's he's not a, downgrading him at all to say he's a pet. What's Fury's cat called? The goose. Yeah, what's the thing? The, what's the kid? Oh. What is the monster uh, called? Uh, yeah. uh, no, 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 something or that, something. something. He's, a that, he's a that thing. He's a that thing. He's a that he thing. He's a powerful, thing. cute thing. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. I think... Uh, I, But I, unlike Goose? Yeah. It's freaking Yoda. So it's like <laughs> it's a Yoda. It's and we don't I know. I find it amazing going. that we have gone we through this much of the show. We don't know the species what name. Baby Yoda is like what the species is, what his name is, I thought or it, even why people are chasing after him. Other than the fact that he can wield the force, definitely. I think uh, why the, are because uh, the let's actually talk about that. So sure. the idea that magic will always be there in a Star Wars story, right? Mm-hmm. Like this, the the mystic arts will always penetrate a Star Wars story, even if they say they claim, oh, this is about a. Uh, hard as nails kind of bounty hunter and he's going to kill people and it's all going to be guns and fucking blasters and shit and then at the end of the episode there was like nope there's Yoda <laughs> yeah <laughs> so the fact that star wars always has to return to to this idea does this uh is this because After, like not many people kind of people knew about Luke, but they didn't know he was a Jedi. They don't really know. Let's think about the story of Star Wars, the Skywalker saga, mm-hmm. without from a third person's perspective, right? Like watch Rogue One or Solo or this, okay. and you can tell that most of the people because the galaxy is so huge and sprawling, mm-hmm. that not very many people know a about the idea which is called the Force. One, mm-hmm. okay, they can't even they don't even know what it's called. they just say oh he's got like powers or something like that yeah. or that's yeah. what happens in this show as well yeah. yeah so that's one thing the second thing is the, everybody knows about darth vader and the emperor and that they know that those guys are sits but i don't think they know much about luke skywalker they know luke skywalker as a guy who was on tatooine you're talking about but what time are we this talking about this is post this is post return of the jedi so yeah. now okay. he's like a war hero i guess yeah. you know people know him but yeah. i don't think they know him as like a jedi as such and like because the the term jedi and the fact that he is the last jedi at least at that point not many people are familiar with the concepts of the force and the jedi and the sith and okay. so 
the introduction of a character All they like know this is the people <coughs> ruling them and yes. the rebellion they think of a subjugation from the empire's point yes. of view not not like a like a nazi kind of thing not kind like of, a, yeah. a like oh there's a huge kind of mystical force that is governing them kind of makes sense in terms of how this kind of thing plays out yeah, right yeah, like absolutely. you know hitler tell, but who beat hitler <laughs> Uh, there's no, no there's no specific person you'd point at yes, necessarily so he killed true. himself yes <laughs> i mean yeah but like who defeated uh, the, the yeah you're, German you're right i mean allies. fear fear <laughs> the allied powers it was no. the only thing they had to fear himself fear itself yeah. Yeah. yeah it's so true though you, you can't really put a put a thing on it and because of that like everyone's perception when of this character when they see him no wonder everybody's after him does that make sense does that check out uh, that everybody's after who baby yoda like the fact that i guess th- they are like flipping out because they're like oh the the empire is destroyed mm-hmm. but there is remnants of it in this kind of that are trying to revive yeah this this imperial regime what they call imps in the mm-hmm. show and stuff mm-hmm. and and because of that there is a demand for this for well, this child I okay. wonder uh, because what yeah. I found really curious was uh, Werner Herzog's character yes. who's uh, the only known as the client really yes. at the start says bring me the thing mm. and if it's dead I I get it. Sometimes that has to happen. Yeah. So why is he so hell bent on getting this uh, possible well, baby Yoda, even, even if it's dead? Even well, if it's if it's not in his hands, then it's in somebody's hands who might use it against him. So maybe in no, that way that. I, it, no. But uh, you see the clash where uh, Gus Fring yeah. only wants it alive. Yeah. And well, so that, I I think to answer your question, I think it's because he didn't care that much because he was just a middleman. Yeah, he's a middleman. He's grandiose. Yeah, but clearly, had he had some big ideas. He had right? big but ideas. He, ex- he was exits an, the plot quite yeah, frivolously, exactly. like, which is, is a shame because that's less Werner Herzog. Yeah. <laughs> but I think if you think about it, like that's just good writing for the first three episodes where you introduce to the guy. You think mm. that he's he's the big this, bad. The big bad. Yeah. But he must be pretty cool to get to that position of power that he's in. <laughs> but at the same time, the errand yeah. isn't his errand. The errand is Moff Gideon's errand. Mm. And so he's doing it out of fear of I don't want the dude with the freaking dark saber. Come on, how, how have we not talked about? Okay, this we will talk about. Um, it. I don't want the dude with the dark saber killing me. So I need the thing. But yeah. yeah, if you kill him, I don't care that much. I just want to make the dude with the dark saber happy. Yeah, and that's really all it is. At the end of the day, it, mm. I think you're right, and that's how we felt about him for the first few episodes, and then rug is pulled out under us at the very end because, yeah. like, oh, this wasn't you didn't care if he lived or died because you didn't care. You're just doing it because it was a job that somebody else told you to do. Yeah, mm. Moff Gideon knows better, which is why he's I like, mean, I, yeah. I want him alive. Don't touch him. He's mine. I was kind of upset that I knew that uh, Gus Fring is in this show because the the more episodes that uh, elapsed without him being in it, I was just like. I'm pretty sure he's going to show up in the finale. I conveniently forgot. Yeah, so I kind of so because I remember him from the trailer. I was like, "Oh shit, when is he going to come?" In fact, the characters that are presented to us in, you know, in whatever Star Wars celebration and stuff, they kind of take that time to really show up and then they disappear and then they come back again. Uh little, like Cara Dune, she kind of is in one episode primarily and then she kind of shows up much later on. So I was like, "Oh, okay, cool. So it's quite a sparse yeah. Uh, show in terms of cast and stuff So I was just like So when he showed up I was like Okay cool This is the dude And uh, yeah But just to come to the point That really blew my mind Is at the very end Of course The ship doesn't blow up You know he crash lands Into the desert At the end And uh, and yeah He pulls out a dark saber The dark saber There's only one mm-hmm. As far as we know yeah. It f***ing blew my Small mind It was just <laughs> amazing Cause like Um I've seen this thing from like we've seen it in Clone Wars. Uh, it's there. Uh, do you know who uses it in the Clone Wars? Should we go- get into that? It's like amazing. Let's not spoil. Let's, let's not spoil Clone Wars. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I only think- that came out like <laughs> ten years ago. Let's let's take a break. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Come back and <laughs> let's discuss the dark saber and how the show ties into Star Wars lore overall. Cool. Done. Welcome to Peak Planet, a new podcast where we delve into the fallouts of the growth path that we and indeed much of the world has chosen. Sustainable growth is the buzzword. Until we nail that down, we need to ensure that we keep our population healthy and also have the resources for our increasingly urban lifestyles. I'm Karthik Ganesan, a researcher at the Council on Energy, Environment and Water, a Delhi-based policy research institute where for almost a decade we've been trying to explain and change the use, reuse and misuse of our resources. In the first season of Big Planet, we take up air pollution, public enemy number 1 and an invisible one at that. increasingly the most important risk factor for adverse health outcomes air pollution has become the most unwanted byproduct for an aggressively growing economy over four episodes we find out how prepared our systems are to deal with this crisis you can catch the entire first season of peak planet out now on the ivm podcasts app or website or wherever you get your podcast from hey guys we're back we're talking about mando the music of the show is 
fucking legit. <laughs> it's great. It is great. It's our uh, it's Oscar winner Ludwig Göransson. Who uh, done? done who has done Black Panther and oh. he's done uh well the mandalorian i knew it he's done the mandalorian of course yeah. uh, but he used to do back in the day community and him and uh, right. donald glover started working together so he produced all of childish gambino yeah, stuff as well yeah that's what i was going to say and uh, he won the I mean. oscar for black panther if i'm not mistaken hmm. deserved mm-hmm. yeah, i mean if arm yet another it. in the long <laughs> list of uh, well arm deserves it he didn't deserve it for the thing he won it for I mean, i'm i'm, <laughs> not, I'm, I'm for. totally fine he won for it for slumdog, slumdog millionaire when he's done like way more incredible but he stuff. did uh, the next year he was nominated as well for 127 hours which i thought was even better like a better it soundtrack it was it really was and he and the, should have won for that and there was a great well. song with uh, with dido as well yes which is good in 127 hours yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's like a credit song That's but good. it's a great song okay. and he's also there and he's going oh like he's just like he's doing his ear man thing he's um, <laughs> he's adding ambient texture yeah, yeah his voice is really like textural it really is yeah it's a good texture so uh speaking of great textures hmm. this, this best show car, is purely well, <laughs> great texture isn't it it really is it's like setting a bunch of great texture and going like here's a little dot of something happening on that beautiful texture i agree with you what's your favorite uh setting in this like the which is your favorite planet like that uh, they go to I thought you were going to say what's your favorite texture rusted steel it's <laughs> 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 uh, some of it that is old best karma <laughs> yeah give it to us what did you what is your favorite moment in the show before we talk about the dark saber hmm i don't know i think everything with the uh Any time I see Cantina esque things in any yeah, Star Wars, yeah, love that shit. Yeah, I actually I loved IG Eleven. I do love it. Uh, IG Eighty Eight is another IG unit which has previously been in like Star Wars and stuff. So to see one in like a live action kind of thing because he's there in like Clone Wars and and stuff, if I'm not mistaken. And IG and yeah. IG IG Eighty Eight in the two. Yes, and uh, was that yeah. Modern Rebels? I thought that was not that sure. Could be wrong. Anyway, I, maybe I'm conf- confusing the two, but those are you know when they say that why the Mando doesn't trust is like this is a killing machine. Yes, he is an absolutely a killing machine, and we only get to see it really in the last episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it is kind Tell of the first one. Yeah, but not as much. Not like as the, much. The, the maneuvers in the last one sure. are. an epic so yeah. Uh, yeah it's more than him just like uh, in, i think because the first and the last ones are the only ones where he faces some kind of competition otherwise yeah. he's so good that he, he just like yeah, destroys them yeah it's great oh no also in the one where they're uh, trapped on that uh, ship with uh, the bilbo gang <sighs> That is the IG great. there in that? IG's not in that. Oh I oh you're talking about IG. Yeah, yeah, yeah IG. He's not Mando. Just talking about Mando himself. Yeah. Yeah. Mando's his best move. Okay, in the whole show, which was my favorite, mm-hmm. apart from getting a f***ing jetpack, yeah. which is sick. <laughs> But um that part where um he's first getting off uh Nav Na- Nav Navarro? Yeah. The yeah, the main planet. Dave. Yeah. Dave. <laughs> I couldn't help but yeah, anyway, yeah. uh the Jane's addiction planet. Correct. So the when he's getting off and he's taken the child, he's basically busted in and he's kill everybody and he's got all those cool upgrades and shit. He's getting off and he's trapped and Grief Karga is like, "Yo, I'm gonna beat you up or whatever. Okay, whatever he says, right? <laughs> I'm gonna bash you. I'm gonna bash you. He's bash you. Yeah, the it's Apollo Creed. Uh-huh. He can do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Freaking grief is so good. Yeah, Carlos. grief cargo. Love it. Anyway, um, he, he basically does this little flip onto the onto the speedo. I don't know if you remember that. Mm-hmm. It is f- Get cool, man! Nice. I was just like, I just want good, like, cool stunts and shit right yep. now because it's a Mando, man, and he does all of that. I loved it, and it wasn't Pedro, damn it! <laughs> so sad. No, Probably but it wasn't. But, yeah, we don't know. It's cool. Maybe mm. one day he should have been like, hey, I want to do it today. <laughs> I mean, that's that's most stunts you've all you've seen in every film. That it's not them. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, Wait, no. Mission Except Impossible. Tom Cruise, yes. Except Tom Cruise. <laughs> Except Tom Cruise. Okay. You know, Tom Cruise goes and does other people's stuff. He's not like Judy and Sam Dalton. He's just mad at it. But are there that many? Maybe it's Tom Cruise. It could have been Tom Cruise He's in the Mando suit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if uh, if you could get a little more height to him. Yeah. When they make Bono's biopic, hmm? Tom Cruise can play his stunts. Can play his stunts. Yeah. Same <laughs> Bono height. stunts. Yeah. Same height. So what? Jumping from falling off stage. He's fallen off stage a lot. Yeah. Oh, like that. Yeah, I was looking. What stunts are you Bike talking accident, about? Break sure, 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 sure. No, yeah. Is cool, it just cool. me? Does Bono look a lot like Robin Williams? You're right. He does. Kind of. They he both does. have he that like white, crinkly, crossy, oh, joyish face. Feel bad because my dreams. 
Robin Williams and, and Bono will, together? No, Robin Williams as Bono and Tom oh. Cruise doing stunts. Oh no, I thought you said Bono as Robin you Williams. You want the dead guy to play the alive <laughs> yeah, guy? Yes. <laughs> it's the other way. That's what I said. That's what's within my dreams. Oh man, I, saw, I just saw I this Insta story happen. of Zelda Williams hmm? uh, playing the, you know, which Disney character are you? You know, put on that, you know, that, oh, right, right, that right. ER thing. And it sure is the genie. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And she like, she just snorts. That's awesome. It's amazing. Nice. Yeah. What are your uh, so favorite the moments in the show right then? <laughs> okay, so I, let's, I want to talk about the Dark Saber. So the Dark Saber is previously featured in Clone Wars and Rebels. Hmm. Um, in Clone Wars, it's used by many principal, very, very, like, in fact, can I just say who uses it? Okay, no, I'll say no, no, don't, 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 okay. Tell us Let what us makes spoil. it special. Okay, Why so is it the, such so an important Saber, weapon? So the Dark Saber is the, is the principal... Uh, weapon of the Mandalorians It's their weapon oh, yeah? And it is Not mystical As much as it Like as a light I mean it's about as mystical As a lightsaber yeah. sure. uh, And it's got uh, But basically Whoever wields it Is the is the ruler of Mandalore And who basically Fights for So wait If you have the dark saber You rule Mandalore Well I mean not uh, Loosely It's, it's, like, that, it's like It's, a, it's, it's like a an symbol. Excalibur It's, a, it's, yeah, yeah, it's exactly. a symbol Kind of thing like, okay. Within with, with lightsabers As we see them more and more Especially like In the extended universe With like the games And all that yeah. mm-hmm. They're so interchangeable Just like there's there's a vague thing of like you know yeah if you're bad you're red if you're good you're and if you're colors, red, you're gold and yeah and yeah. if you're Ashoka you're the coolest and you have white white but she is the coolest that's, but that's pretty arbitrary by that's, the way Jishnu we what? have to talk about that what okay Which so part? we spoke <laughs> sorry we spoke about Rise of Skywalker in a couple of episodes ago so we're not spoiling anything but uh, uh, we we did hear Ashoka's voice yes. in the episode yes. and apparently Dave Filoni recently said they were like yo bro what the what the fish yeah. is uh, is Ashoka gone and he's like no you don't have to you don't have to die to Yes, that's what I'm going with. I'm going with that. Yes. I'm going hundred fucking percent. So has said it is done. Sir has said. Okay, no. So to, <clears throat> so to just to end the uh, dark saber discussion, which is that uh, yes, it is a principal uh, weapon of the Mandalorians, and the Mandalorians were a very proud, like big race back in the day, and now obviously everything is reduced to nothing. The Jedi's are gone. Mandalorians are gone. Everybody who's cool is like an is like almost like dwindling, basically all endangered mm-hmm. species. So. Um, even in Rebels, actually, uh, there is a you know there is a Mandalorian character Sabine who is a big part of the of the show, and in the later seasons, there's like a two season, three season arc, maybe. No, no, or yeah, two- I mean, like it's a it's a long arc, but yeah. it really comes to fruition only in the in final. the second last season, I think, yeah. or the final season, well, yeah. Okay. And it's epic. So basically, <clears throat> it ends in safe hands. I won't say whose, but uh, but since then we haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. we see it now yeah. So there's a lot That may have transpired In that time And, and obviously it's tied Very closely to the DNA Of, of, the, of the Mandalorian Like culture And things which, like that so. Which makes things Very exciting yeah. Because with the very little We know about Moff Gideon all we know is from that one moment where he says, "I know all of your names and I know where you're from." That's so cool. Yeah. It's the, he's literally just Gus. He is it's exactly Gus, Gus with Gus. the lightsaber, Come which on. means he's gonna this get two faced. Cannot get more cooler. This cannot get more cooler. Don't get two faced. Um, but so, what's really cool to think about is the fact that you would think, "Oh, he's an imp. Cool. He's a high. He's a highfalutin imp who's been in a bunch of wars. That's uh, for he knows things." But the fact that he's holding that saber yeah. alludes to. Is he like an ex? Is he a? Is he, he used a, to be a Mandalorian? Yeah, used to be a Mando that was maybe uh, could be cast cool. aside or, or something like or that. Or, or did he, he kill, a Mandalorian? kill a Mandalorian? Yeah, exactly. yeah that's I mean, probably what's happening. Which makes it that much more deeply personal. Yeah, it's a for, revenge story. It's a revenge story now for for Mando. Like he has mm-hmm. a personal investment in this beyond just oh the bad guys come to get us. It's the bad guy who did. And number of things that we can now yeah. slowly find out about. So though I want to say that the, you know. that the, one of the <clears> concepts I do enjoy about this show is that they specifically say and kind of. Make it canon that Mandos aren't uh, aren't like a uh, a, a species. They're, they're, they are yeah. they're not a race. They're just a, a creed. A they said, they said. They're a frat, yeah. yeah. And which is great because I mean, even in the beginning of the show, you know, he kind of they allude to the fact that he is a foundling and stuff, and that's why he cares for this child because he's also a foundling. And they kind of make that a, a point at the end that he has to be raised or he has to go find his. Father or his his family, I guess this. this uh, I believe he's, it was he's looking for you species. return him to his, his uh, rightful return, place until yeah. then. He's your kid. Yeah, yeah. return Which him is, to his people, or otherwise he's yours. Yeah, return yeah. to the Jedi, my favorite uh, <laughs> oh. Star Wars movie. Of course. Um, yeah, and Yoda is dead by this time, so this is weird, interesting. So there is only one other Yoda type character. I don't know what the species is called, but there's Yaddle who's there in the Jedi Council in Phantom Menace. Yoda. Yeah, the Lady Yoda. So uh, which is why people were just like. God damn! Did they like they hook up or some shit? So <laughs> let's get to the point. Uh, the baby yeah. Yoda is only known as the child in the show, in the yeah. Ch- yeah. known as baby Yoda in popular culture. Yeah. And maybe we know that from the species. Y- 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 exactly. What do we think baby Yoda's name is? 
Clearly it has to be a Y and a D in there. It, 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 it can't be uh, Danny. It, uh, I would be so funny if they just Danny? gave him a, like a like his name is Din Jarek. Is that his name? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Din Jarek. Din so yeah. such a great Star Wars name. Yeah. Um, so they should just call. He should just be called like uh, Bob. Bob Jarek. Bob Saget. Bob, Bob Jarek. <laughs> Bob, Bob Saget, please. <laughs> Bob Saget. You're adding Jishnu's More other favorite thing into this. <laughs> yeah. I'm dying, man. It's a, it's a full but house. But you do know Baby Yoda was played by twins. <laughs> <laughs> they, they had to have had two Mary, 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 Mary Kate and Ashley yeah. uh, Yoda. <laughs> oh, oh God. Man. <laughs> man. <laughs> One of is save this? Yeah, one of okay. my favorite people on the planet because he is probably not from this planet. Yeah. But uh, in a bunch of interviews he gave, yeah. he he among other things, yeah, he was like, I, uh, "You just have to cry when you see the beauty." Of no, the- he apparently encouraged them to not use CGI and to yeah, use yeah, a, yeah. a prop, which is oh, man, I mean, yo, what a freaking awesome, what a okay. puppet, man. Let me, Holy let me, shit. That, two of them running it. Let, I mean, let me, let right? me go. Let me throw back to our texture conversation. Uh, Love textures. The best, the best thing about one of the best things about this. Every time when there are those giant lulls of no dialogue and it's just epic landscape shot or whatever the hell or like a travel montage mm-hmm. or whatever <laughs> uh, a better version of uh, oh Beyonce's God. spirit uh, from spirit. Lion King watching a little guy travel across the desert this is how you do it um, <laughs> so in celebration yeah during Star Wars celebration they showed little um, uh BTS Lil Yoda? footage Lil Yoda <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god Lil Yoda The SoundCloud rapper version of Yoda <laughs> Sorry continue just now Sip 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 uh, They showed oh, like, like, of like them Lil making Yoda the does. thing The VFX shots of the Yeah uh, I remember that That was so cool okay. And they It shows I think like That they used The Old school method of making models and oh, just miniatures! Mini- make miniatures yeah. blow up. Nice. Did you see great. that razor crest flying through? It, so there is good. something viscerally different about the texture. <laughs> it, you're right. Uh, you're right. It, it feels different. And in that vein, same baby Yoda. You know, it's a real thing. You can feel the weight of it when he picks it up. It feels clumsy because mm. yeah, he is clumsy. He's mm. holding a baby. What God knows what the. F- and it's a child. That's, that's how we are. It's a feel. Child. First of all, you have to cradle it. Yeah, he never cradles it. Yeah, he just picks him up. He holds straight, it like, like a, a bomb. cat. Yeah, he holds it like a freaking bomb. <laughs> because he, nobody trained him on how to be. Because Lil Yoda is the bomb. Yeah. Tell me something. Tell us, you youngsters, is uh, isn't Rebels also really like oh this my at the God. start? Don't you dare utter that word. Where, you, where it's very episodic to start with. It is. It is Always very episodic. Episode. No, right? but there is yeah, a principle. But, uh, kind you of know how, like at the end of the first season of Rebels, not a lot has happened really in terms of like the larger arc. You spent a bunch of episodes really just getting to know these is characters. Is this your criticism of yeah. our favorite show? Criticism? I'm literally you saying I love the watching Are you saying Rebels is like boys? How dare you? <laughs> what? Oh my goodness! Put in words into my mouth. I'm saying yeah, since yeah. we're talking. Yeah, no, no. About no sorry, go ahead. You, so you're saying that the first season. You're right. The first season, even of Clone Wars. Like I'm actually, saying, it, it's built in exactly the same way as and Clone Wars as well, right? So uh, I was built yeah. in this episodic way where at the end of it, a lot has happened and like major things have changed in terms of the universe as a whole. You're right. I, but I, right after the first think, season, you're the like, key, all the key right, difference here somewhere. is that both those shows are incredibly big ensembles this is really just the one guy no but right. also there's another difference is it like a rebels sh- for adults no yeah I mean, it, no, not, uh, so not I'll, I'll tell you that, 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 those two shows were in, in, initially were supposed to find like a very young audience and they yeah. ended up just getting like basically Star Wars fans and hmm. there is still a lot of criticism for the first Seasons of both Of Clone Wars And Rebels Because really? the, yeah, because they said It was slightly aimless Like that it was It was too anthology I don't think That's coming at like, that's I don't not, know, I, I, That no, was I, the goal I think I agree No but I agree But I'm saying Empirically also The first seasons of The first season of Clone Wars Isn't as great I'll I'll give it that, mm-hmm. and then it really starts to pick up speed by the time you get to the third season, and then you get to you know Madame Satine and all these little mini arcs in in the show. So uh, in Rebels, also particularly, I think also the first season is is slightly slower than the not slower, but like it's slightly disconnected because you feel like you haven't bonded with because the there's, there's a bunch of table mini setting arcs in every yeah. episode. There's right? more yes. table setting necessary when you have such a giant ensemble. Yeah, like, and by the time Agent Callus like becomes like this, like the this like what is supposed to be like the very basic. Kind of evil villain Of the first season Of Rebels Becomes like The most like Empathetic Like yes. character Like later on yeah. Which is an amazing shift But yeah of course That does take a little bit of time It takes I thought, time And I don't I, think That's the end goal Necessarily I, to start with It becomes a goal yeah. Later I also but, thought uh, that Because those shows Are slightly shorter And for Initially aimed at kids Like mm-hmm. uh, I thought that This one would uh I mean, I didn't expect really. I mean, maybe I did have some kind of expectation where it would have like a much more like 
TV show format but this is kind of like like i said a very you know, tv very, show very yeah. old school tv show not like anything that is like on like not like an hbo style thing where it's, it's like not a essentially lot. a single story yes yeah, by itself right. and it's cool i'm actually so digression so, so favro is on for for season 2 also he's back as showrunner mm-hmm. and he's going to stay on for he a bit he did speak right? that cool so uh, as the famous line from the show goes I have said that. Uh, I've <laughs> I've said that. Look, you heard me? I said something. Here's my thesis, okay? Like that only. Here's my thesis. Yes. Uh this is one of possibly my favorite things in the Star Wars universe because I think one of the things I enjoy and a lot of people enjoy about the Star Wars universe as a whole is the world that has been built, right? More so than here's the story of the Skywalkers or I mean not more so necessarily, but along with here's the Skywalker Equally saga or like yeah. here's what happened uh, with uh, Mr. Solo. <coughs> yeah. There's been this uh, lived in world which is one of the key things Lucas was going for as well when he made the first one which is like nothing shiny or new here everything's like dinged up and dented because yeah. everything has a story to it mm-hmm. and I think that has always been the philosophy of Star Wars where no, like you might see ago. something yeah, yeah it's a, it, it all happened a long time ago and you're entering at a moment where there's already been like so many millennia probably of history yes. so like you see a single item and then like kind of like, like a Lord of the Rings or any fantasy exactly but like now you could in keep space. Killing, uh, building out like various backstories yeah. to it and so on but you've created this world where it's it's almost like a sitcom in that way where once you've built the world and you've built nice characters you're not necessarily going like okay when is monica going to get married though you're going to go like all right what's monica up this week she's there and sorry spoilers <laughs> spoilers for friends spoilers for friends hey listen um, huh. uh Yes, I agree with so you. So I have now, like, I really like these characters, and I love the idea of the world they build. So while I'm obviously curious of what the larger story is, I feel like even if in the next season, right until episode eight or nine, you don't see Moff Gideon again, or even if like mm. you don't build up to it, and that's something that's only really revealed in season four. Yeah, I think that's fine because I think the lens that I am coming to the show with, at least, is yeah. I want to see what. My boys are up to every week. What exactly. uh, Baby Yoda and the Mando are doing. That's true. It's exactly. adventures of Baby Yoda and the Mando, and not yeah. really like, oh my god, what's the end game for Baby Yoda yeah. and the Mando? Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I, I I I do enjoy a myth arc. Like I'm I'm a big fan of that kind of stuff, especially like because I know when Filoni has done it on both shows on Clone Wars and in Rebels, they are fantastic, and it's given me the most like breathtaking moments in Star Wars, and some yeah. of those haven't yeah. come from the movies. Yeah. So it's it is it is something to desire from this show, especially since. There's a lot of heft in these. There's a lot of. I mean, by the virtue of it being an actual live-action TV series that we're seeing for the first time from Star Wars, how about that little intro thing that they do? I was just like, oh my god, what Star Wars! Is, you know, they have like. <laughs> oh, how right, how right, do right. we start Star Wars yeah. without this, the scroll? The new yeah. Star Wars yeah. vanity card. Yes, yeah, I, love I love it. it. Oh it's my really god. good. I saw it and I was just like, I love Star Wars, man. This is so cool. They can just do anything they want. But yeah, so so to 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 do it like. With real characters for the first time ever, there was no real precedent for it, and I just feel like because the show has been such a success uh, in the way that it's been done and the characters and everything like that, I think they have the chance to make something really like beautiful in terms of like a story. Some some part of Star Wars that maybe we haven't seen yet, like that's what Rebels and Clone Wars did. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's the standard that I'm holding this show to. Uh, weirdly, I will say this though: you, you when you talk about George Lucas. Making the first Star Wars movie, I think he went in going with this idea that hey, this is the hero's journey, and this is about Luke Skywalker and the Force, and the byproducts of things that he didn't know they were going to become as famous or as like desired by the audiences. One was Han Solo, and Han Solo being the grifter, you know, like a guy, a smuggler on the run all the time. And I think they were like, cool, that works for Star Wars. Bounty hunters work for Star Wars, and the Force works for Star Absolutely. Wars. Absolutely, but right? I think uh, he might not have obviously like planned out the entire thing. And no, the no, actual no, no, story no, yeah. itself is like, here's a hero's journey. Exactly. But what I love is the fact that you start from Episode Four, right? Yes. Even though that was like an after the fact revision, it's like you're thrown into the middle of something that has been going on for ages and probably will go on for ages. Yeah. It's no, a, I, I agree. It's a very like the in media res aspect of it, especially since we know for this one we know where it has come from and where it's going to go as well. Mm-hmm. Like because it's set between seven and uh, six and seven. So not you know well, like the to, long long game, I suppose. Yeah. So that's the thing. To to that point, and, no, I'm mean, talking about like the, the bookends which, of the of the story. The, the thing, the these story. bookends are far more loose than say. Even though we've been talking a lot about Clone Wars and Rebels, the main thing I was thinking about um, more than those shows is actually Rogue One and Solo because. Hmm. I think I'm only thinking of I, I was obviously thinking about and Clone Wars and Rebels and those have very definitive endings that you yeah, have yeah. to hit yeah. I was thinking about Clone Wars and Rebels obviously because Filoni's name is on it and I've been waiting for my boy to get his time 
also uh, by the way uh, especially after all the fan service rise of skywalker had best cameo hands down in the entire, entire star wars universe is filoni's filoni's cameo oh, the fact okay, that yeah, he yeah. got a cameo did you miss it wait what is it you missed it no, episode 7 episode 6 or 7 oh he's not in episode 8 right oh sorry the last one which we just saw no he's not in the final yeah, 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 yeah. in the in the x wing no he's talking about episode 7 of the mandalorian not yeah. the oh right right yeah of course yeah in this show yes yes, yes you're right yeah so cool anyway point is uh, oh, I, i was, was comparing show, it more yeah. to rogue one and um, solo because uh, rebels and clone wars are st- very much in the in keeping with uh, the saga films in that they're huge ensembles and yes each episode is like a adventure of the day but they are very much <coughs> getting to some bigger overarching thing which will affect everybody which yeah, affects all our characters right all our all our heroes mm-hmm. um and we know that that mini plot that that show is talking about has a small Venn diagram that merges with the bigger saga films but the thing with mandalorian which i like which Ro- rogue one and and uh, mm. solo were sort of bound by and not in the best way was the fact that we knew the end game immediately like we knew that this film genuinely has That's an true. end point especially with rogue one yeah. like it was so definitive yeah. what i love about the mandalorian is that you have both you have the best of both worlds you have the freedom of it's just one guy which star wars has never had the freedom to do me it did a little bit in rogue one with with jin or so like it tried to set her up with jin and, with jin and ensemble. cassian yeah i yeah. love cassian But is getting his own show as that's well that's the thing so yeah. like jin and jin and cassian kind of got a little bit but they had the big click ticking clock above their head the whole time right mando doesn't have that yeah, we true. know that yeah episode 7 will happen at some point but really practically speaking because he's so disparate from the rest of the universe it can happen any time he could yeah. he could meet if if and when he were to meet the the new trilogy characters he could just show up in the middle of episode 9 who's to say like it why could. why what there's nothing that we know at the moment yeah. that determines what the end mark is yeah. for his time yeah. right yeah. we don't even hear his voice in ray's head <laughs> yeah. so, so i'm i'm what am i doing here <laughs> so, So um I'm excited that like it's limitless in that way and I'm excited that we finally get just one final thing is that um one moment that I loved uh last episode or the second last episode uh I forget which one but Moff Gideon uh with his stormtroopers outside it's genuinely uh it's a shootout at okay corral kind of a moment right yeah. mm-hmm. and he's outside he says okay you guys have un- until what sunset I'm going to bounce I'll come back you better hand it over by then right He leaves. I'm going to bounce. <laughs> That's literally he's like yeah. I'm out of here. He leaves. Like, I'll see you guys. Yeah, he Bit leaves. Of a weird one. Bit of a weird exactly and this is what I love. Such a strange it's a plan. strange move. It's like why is he leaving? Okay, fine, he leaves and then of course what happens when the guy leaves? They fight back because he's gone. Yeah. Oh, duh. Yeah. But when they fight back, it's a beautifully <clears throat> orchestrated fight scene and it goes on for a couple of minutes and the second I thought to myself after being wowed by cool action sequences and all that stuff, I was like wait a minute. The guy just left. Couldn't he just come right back? he comes right back mm. which is not something star wars ever has the time to do because so anytime a moment like this happens where it's all of our heroes literally all the heroes in this show versus <laughs> the biggest bad in the show yeah whenever that moment comes in a saga film it's the end it's the third act now what happens in every third act there are two fights minimum happening simultaneously yeah, so one, is one is in space one is in space one is on the ground <laughs> one is in the forest one is on a ice planet whatever the hell yeah. we don't get that in this show it's literally right here right now and if you think for a second that they missed something and they're going to their excuse to get out of oh we missed it is we'll cut away to this other guy so that we can subvert your expectation and be like ah now I'll take the ball to this other planet yeah. and when i come back to planet 1 we'll have bounced over that error by skipping it it happened off camera yeah Star Wars is infamous for oh it's fine it happened off camera that's why yeah. Yeah, that's why you know we explain it in another trilogy exactly but but in short I was like you okay, can't cool. do that in Mandalorian which is not you you could did that in Rebels you did that in Clone Wars you did that in every other damn thing in Star Wars but Mando you can't do that because yeah. it's so it is it is new ground for them I agree it's it's brilliant and it's cool like they've the narrative has changed they, I love it they, they've also not just made a show that is separate from the the rest of the universe it's also got its own like style it's like this yeah. kind of quasi western kind of yeah. samurai lone gunslinger vibe which i'm like very cool with very i enjoy yeah. it a lot yes like while st- while the saga films kept the samurai gunslinger visual aesthetic mm. this one actually follows yeah. through with the the, narrative. Ca- the character the yeah the narrative Boom. like that the what you my face the saga films are far more you know Joss Whedon-esque Firefly kind of like it's the family yeah. going out in the mystery machine and getting up to no good 
although there's an mm. overarching story but each each episode yeah. is again how, very episodic how is Love how it. is the how is the gang going to do it this time right last yeah. jedi was weird for people because we broke up the gang for the first time in a long time yeah. right that's i think one of the big reasons why people are conflicted about that about last jedi that's not the one, biggest reason one of them one of yeah, them yeah. Yeah. conflicted you mean wrong yeah, <laughs> yeah. i mean wrong. uh but but through and through it's always been the gang like you know you watch phantom menace and it's like we have this new gang of folks and then one of them passes away we get a new guy for the next episode one of them leaves we get a new guy for the next one and then the you know they just pass the ball yeah. this one it's not that this one is finally it's actually a samurai story it's actually the lone gunslinger and the black cowboy hat yeah. playing by his own rules and then there's a cute baby yeah man i thought that he would take off his helmet and he'll put it on baby yoda oh Yeah. It would uh, engulf baby Yoda yeah, I think. Would, that's, that's the point like to save it from yeah, like something. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit, that'd be awesome. That'd be that great. would be a great reason to take off the helmet. But that'll be cool. You see the helmet like just walking across the ground. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> tell me how cute that would be. Also, I love his reveal of his face. Yeah. It was just very non nonchalant. Yeah, not yeah, no shalants. There was yeah. zero shalants in his reveal. It was Dengar, you brought up a great point, wasn't? I think it was you that told me that uh <clears throat> the Mandos because of the the helmet thingy and the creed and everything about that 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 basically yes yeah? it's it's kind of like it is uh maybe it is practically inspired from like the sikh religion in general yeah. because they it's a uh, like their warriors and yeah. they're they've got the and care. and they have a dark saber wait, wait sorry past. i didn't i missed something what is that it's, look at how they conduct themselves yeah uh-huh. everything about what they they it's not a religion so what are they whatever they call them the mandalorians yeah it's it's, it's, a, a, creed, it's a creed it's a creed, right? Right? Yeah. They're, they're a creed is that you never rem- show your face so you you have a a, a visual thing is that okay how strict what? is that because we've seen mandalorians who reveal their face yeah but that's also after a phase of mandalore that has passed yeah. so okay. that became a new thing but so like this, from now it's like on, this is new like a new chapter right. of the frat okay the one that he's part of <laughs> yeah. okay it's a new chapter which is pretty old school and f- not fundamentalist like but they have a very strict code that they are adhering to yeah. but like a character like sabine who's kind of like an orphan or she's like a ex, she's walking like, around without the helmet the entire time yeah but but, then, no, but, she, but she has bad also. blood with but she has bad blood she's like yeah. excommunicated yeah. and I stuff see. like that so it's it's a it's cool guys star wars is amazing they thought it all through <laughs> all right <laughs> it's great so, so, so you were saying that they are like what i didn't they make that i missed that because they never remove the the helmet so they're saying their religion no 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 not <laughs> no we're drawing that, we're saying that possibly the clan. inspiration came from, from yeah. like the real world religion of sikhism sikhism because they're a warrior clan i missed that they completely have a sword did you just say that and the whole thing yeah did i just say that like yes. before this yeah yeah yes. all right okay i didn't hear it and i was like wondering what you guys are talking about uh yeah oh, It's they have I the, mean, a lot they of have the uh, sword yes. the 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 dark saber but yeah. <laughs> the one the one let yeah. down the one let down is uh he shaves he sure. doesn't shave you don't know he that until he took his helmet off and it's a pretty smooth gelat mark 3 shave man. no no he's got a mustache what are you talking Oddly. about it's more like he hasn't, gonna, he hasn't shaved he's since he's got a history of taking stuff from real world religions and like turning it into yoda, a thing yoda hello is yoda ashoka tano ashoka ashoka yoda Yoda, all, all it, like lots of uh, lots of Hinduism in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, for, it, for it's da- like for uh, damn sure. There's Buddhism. this tradition of taking inspiration from uh, ancient religious epics and going like, what if we turn it into Star Wars things? I mean, the word Jedi also. So many things, guys. So many Jedi things. based on uh, from the two types of Jedi, clan, like Jedi booty. No, no, <laughs> like uh, uh, the two snowman. types of uh, clans, Big the foot. way they were dressed. So one is called Jedi geki, and the other one is called something geki. What uh, clans are these? These are like Japanese, like samurai kind oh. of. Uh, Things. Yeah, it's I mean, dude, Star Wars is hidden fortress. The whole yeah. first movie is the same this, plot. This uh, show has a lot of inspiration from old Japanese cinema. I mean, movie. like it's very western, but western itself came from like samurai movies, so it's like it's like yeah, it's got true. very similar. It's, uh, uh, it's like full circle kind of great vibes. Uh this is good. We so we are very <laughs> this, this, is this this is the way. All right. This is the way. We like uh, Mandalorian. It's a great uh, show. Very Give fun. us more Disney Plus. Give us the oh, Cassian series. We want to see Obi-Wan. We want to see all of it. Just give it to us. Give it to us, goddammit. <laughs> we have spoken. We have spoken. How many times have you motivated yourself to improve your sleep or lose weight? or be more productive how many times have you failed hi my name is ashtin doctor tune into my show the habit coach podcast where we focus on creating small tiny habits to improve your life instead of those big impossible tasks so make listening to me a habit every monday wednesday and friday on the ivm podcast app 
or ivmpodcast.com or on your favorite podcasting app. Hi, my name is Anupam Gupta. I'm B50 on Twitter. I am the host of Pesa Pesa, a show that talks money. On my show, I speak to experts from every field of money and finance, from stock markets, equities, debt funds, credit cards, life insurance, every possible area of money and finance that you can think of. We even did an episode on cryptocurrency. I've got fantastic guests from mutual funds to personal finance experts everywhere. Robo advisory, startups, just name it, we've got it. At Pesa Pesa, we help you make smart decisions about money. You work hard for money. Now make your money work hard for you. New episodes out every Monday and you can listen to my show on the IVM podcast app or any other podcasting app that you have.